Hello, I'm David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned. We're going to be looking at Rails again. Uh, this time we're going to discuss a little bit about a previous episode where we used and stored our JWT as well as our AUD on local storage and what we can do to alleviate that. Uh, we're also going to look at a post by the creator of Devise JWT. Uh, his name is Mark. And we'll see what his explanation is for how you know, he does it and why he does it that way. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and dive in to, well, we have very little code changes this time, so let's go ahead and dive in. So the main reason we're going ahead and store this on local storage is if you're using cookie-based ones, you can't use different domains. So this is going to destroy basically any of your API efforts if you're wanting your API to be used by a lot of different um, services uh, versus just your own internal service. Uh, another thing is we're going to be using this API for our mobile apps, so they don't behave the same way with cookies. And what we're going to do in our app to alleviate this is we're going to use the AUD. And what the AUD is, is it allows us to differentiate and send extra information about the client and store that. That way we can use and compare that um, and make sure that it's a valid AUD. Of course, the biggest concern with using local storage or session storage or any of these other options is that it is susceptible to cross-site scripting. Um, so, you know, someone is able to go ahead and hijack and steal said JWT. So generally speaking, we can do to alleviate that is like one, I said AUD. The other thing that we can do is also set really short session tokens that are refreshed uh, pretty regularly. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see some of the changes we've made in uh, this application or this episode. Haven't really made a lot. The first thing is for our cores file here, we're basically going to go ahead and set our origins. Um, for now, I'm going to set several local hosts when we're in development mode. And then this is just placeholder text, but when you have different um, applications, we can go ahead and put our app, real applications here of who you want it to be set across. So obviously, like I had just said, if you are having a bunch of different um, users who are having different domains, then you might have to have this just be um, star still. Um, otherwise, you know, if you can lock it down to certain domains, then you can update your course respectively. The next thing we did is um, in our allow list here, we removed the unknown for the AUD. It's a requirement in our application, so we're going to go ahead and it's going to fail if it doesn't have it. So let's go ahead and just uh, remove any of the unknown uh, default code. And this last thing isn't really a necessity. It's just something I'm doing kind of for fun. Um, it's more obscurity or security through obscurity. That's not really providing any additional security. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead. I'm When you're signing in, we're going to be sending over the operating system as well as the browser. And I'm going to be forming it in this um, format, which is how I'm going to be setting the AUD in the next Svelte episode. And we're going to shot 256 that. So it's going to take in the operating system as well as the operating system version, and then the browser version, and then I'm just the minor version, uh, the integer value of that. And then that should match the AUD header that we get in uh, that we're passing along as well. And if we don't, we're just going to um, raise this is raise. Rails, uh, raise an unmatched AUD. And, and that's it for this episode. So we're not going to do anything with this one. We'll see this in action in the next episode a little bit more. We do a lot more changes to make the AUD, um, you know, working respectively, you know, getting that browser value and that operating system value. But let's go ahead and take a look at this thread real quick um, too. So we could just kind of see this user NJT, Nicholas Thompson, he said, if you wanted to have a React, press the uh, cookie with by JWT. Local storage does not recommend a circuit location and susceptible to XSS. HTTP cookie, can we configure device JWT in this way? 
So let's go ahead and see what um, Mark says. He's the creator of device uh, JWT. And he said, as I mentioned earlier, the cookies, they cannot be shared cross domain. If your client and server live in different domains or servers, they're stuck with headers, params, and request response body for client server communication. They live in the same domain, then you can use cookies and for everything, including authentication. So you don't need a token based authentication at all. So let me read that again. If you have everything on the same domain, just use cookies. You don't need to have token based authentication. You don't need to use device JWT. You don't need to use any of this other extraneous information. You could just set it a lot easier. Um, and it goes without saying that even you have to send the token to the server through the headers request, the client can store it in a cookie instead of local storage. So that's kind of his answer and solution, and it, it makes total sense. As you know, as the reply as he comes in from Nicholas, he said, hey, that makes perfect sense. So uh, I guess this solves the issue of CSRF is you have to maintain all your API requests with the auth header. And that's correct. The server will only accept tokens from which the server signer is itself. So that prevents CSRF. So that's why we're going to do and proceed the way we do. And that's why we're using, using AUD as well. So we can know who is each client and can communicate that to, to the user. Um, in the future, we can, if there's a new client, we can send, you know, send an email and have the user uh, verify that that client is valid. Um, this is very common for things like banking applications and stuff like that. You know, a lot of applications don't necessarily need that level of, of trust, but it's something we can do. So that's it for this episode. I know it's short and sweet for the rail side of things. The next episode will be a lot more code on the device side. So let's give it a try. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe, if you will. If you go to programmingtil.com, I have a newsletter there. Uh, I'd love it if you went and subscribed. And I also just set up a Patreon, which I would love for your support. Thank you so much. Bye.